put me in, coach. Yeah. <laughs> playoff waivers, man. This is this I is believe the, any playoff owner should be sitting in MeUndies right now. That's the appropriate kind those of are the, elevated the, feeling you deserve. Underpants making, of champions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. You made the playoffs. Go get yourself some MeUndies. You deserve it. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Let's talk waivers, guys. There's an interesting dynamic that takes place during waiver wire time in the playoffs. Because, at least for me, I start to look very short term, first of all. Uh, yes, I'd love to have the hot new thing that's great in three weeks, but who knows if I'm playing in three weeks. So I'm focusing on winning this week. It's kind of how the NFL players treat each week to week. You're going to put somebody out there because you're not taking for granted you're going to be there the next week. So part of what you do is maybe stop your opponent. That's part of what I'm going to do this week. Got to play some defense. 100%. I mean, this is where waiver wires change. And expert fantasy players, which are all of the Foot Clan out there, you, there are tips and tricks to succeeding in fantasy playoffs. You know, you're playing a different game now. You're playing a game where you're not playing against 12 teams. Nope. You're not worried about the pickups of other guys. Who's going to pick up this guy if I drop him, right? Look at the rosters that are still in there. You know, for instance, on, on, on my team, it sounds ludicrous to drop Randall Cobb I mean, he hasn't been that great, but he's still Randall Cobb, and we're a keeper league. But the two teams in my bracket and the other team, there is no chance that he could start on your guys' behemoth roster. So if I want to keep a quarterback away from you, if I want to keep a, a tight end away from you, if I need that defense that plays the exceptional matchup against you guys next week, obviously it's a little different for me since I'm not worried about this current week. But I'm willing to make different moves that I would never make in week eight because – there is a specific game we're playing, and it is beat the guys in the playoffs. That's it. Yeah, I completely agree. So let's talk some wide receivers. Uh, Devontae Parker, we just mentioned him. He should be starting again. He uh, had that monster touchdown where he elevated to the moon to yeah. catch that yep. ball. Touched the moon, came back. <laughs> he gave it a little high five. Yep. Uh, so Devontae Parker to me is – uh, how good how good will he be this week, Monday Night Football, at home against the Giants? He could be as good as Ryan Tannehill will let him be. And the answer to that is, I don't know, because Ryan Tannehill has been very disappointing the last couple of weeks. Uh, well, not the last couple of weeks, like last week in particular. Did they it's, try to turn him into a game manager last week to win that game? I don't. It's so strange. Because uh, they won. There was all the notes of when the when the OC was being fired down in Miami. Uh, of part of it was because they they had such constraints on Ryan Tannehill. He wasn't allowed to audible out allegedly. These are the notes coming out of Miami. So if you would have think or thought that uh, part of the the new play calling system is now Ryan Tannehill has some audible authority on top of wanting to run the ball more. But then he only threw the ball nineteen times. Uh, so it, that's an interesting thing, but Parker, I think, is a great pickup for a wide receiver needy team. If if you happen to be in that situation, you you were talking this morning, Andy, and I think it was mostly in jest, but I know it's tickling your heart. The idea of it's happening right now of starting Devonte Parker over Chris Ivory on your own team. How I, much of that is because he plays on Monday Night Football, and you just want no, that no, last no, second no, chance? No, 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 that. He's at home against a really bad pass defense. He, he's the future of the team. He has the skill to go up and make a huge – he's got a little bit of what we saw from Odell Beckham Jr. last year, potentially, right? Like, he could have a three-touchdown game. He's big. He's strong. That kind of thing could happen. And Ivory represents, okay, to me, this week against Tennessee, a baseline. Okay, he'll score 10 points. Tennessee hasn't really given up over 20 to anybody all year. They're third against the run. So it starts to go through your mind that depending on what you need for your team, that's another thought process, is is for me, I'm going, do I need 10 points or will I need 25? Because I don't think Ivory gives me the chance at 25 the way that Devontae Parker might. Right. Are you the one seed or are you the sixth seed playing the one seed? Well, yeah, and in this case, I'm playing Mike. And, you know, unfortunately, Ivory doesn't play like later in the day because that would be a decision I'd make based on what the score is halfway through the day. So, yeah, it, it was kind of said in jest because I don't know if I have what it takes to sit down kind of, you know, a top 10 running back that I've had all year long 
in the final game, but I don't know if it's the worst decision. So stay tuned for that because I I'm not I'm not going to rule it out. I'm not going to rule it out. So so you need to start this week. Parker was picked up last week, and these three guys are out there. I want to know who do you pick up, and you need the win this week. Brian Hartline, Doug Baldwin, or Doriel Green Beckham. Uh, out of those three, out of those three guys. You got to pick one up and start him this week. Out of those three, I'm going to go with Baldwin. Yep, because uh, he is officially on fire and has a great matchup. I can't remember who they're playing. I just know it's uh, okay. The, the me, Ravens. So let those me ask you are, this: Doug Baldwin or Devonte Parker? You've got a great matchup with a guy who's been doing it longer against Baltimore. Do you? Who would you feel more confident in? Baldwin. Yeah, me too. Baldwin. More confident in Baldwin, but I would take. The, I'd still take the upside of. Of Parker, although Baldwin's provided it, so I guess I guess Baldwin's the right answer. I guess Bal- Devonte Parker is the flashier answer, but Baldwin's the right answer. Now Brian Hartline, you heard us mention him. If you said, "Huh," maybe you didn't realize the guy's had ten targets, nine targets, twelve targets, eleven targets the last four weeks, eight catches in two straight games. He is plain and simple PPR, uh, you know, produce. Okay. <laughs> yeah, P- I love it. He's PPR, PPR produce. produce because he's he, he's basically eight for eighty or eight for sixty five. Eight for you know he's just gonna produce for you. You know you want to be healthy. You walk in that grocery store, you head to the produce section, and this is what you do in fantasy. You head to the you head to your produce. Well, but then you like what if we become Brian Hartline means you dig past about five or six heads of lettuce that you'd rather have, and you have to take him. So but the, the 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 question mark for Brian Hartline will be Johnny Manziel. One, who is the quarterback? Yeah, yeah. We think it's going to be Johnny Manziel. So will Manziel continue that trend of of getting monster targets to Hartline? And there's been some uh, some other injuries the Cleveland Browns wide receivers have been dealing with. So uh, yeah, tra- what's the latest on Travis Benjamin? Do we know? I mean, he I- says he'll be okay. Okay, because I think he'll practice this week. I think he'll play. Yeah, that makes a big difference, right? Because even though he had eight tar- eight catches the week before, meaning he can he, he'll do be it out. With Travis I mean, he'll be Benjamin. out there. Yeah, but you're right. Uh, I want to before we get to running backs, I do want to talk about Doriel Green Beckham because you're going to see a big stat line from him. And so I wanted to do a little research this morning. This is only the second time. Last week is only he caught five or six targets last week. It's only the second time in the entire year he's caught more than fifty percent of his targets. This is not the normal efficiency of Doriel Green Beckham. He scored, but I'm worried about a mirage here because he played Jacksonville, and that game was a shootout. His team put up 42 points. Right, and he (laughs) caught, you know, he had a big game. But I don't think it's something that I'm counting on. He's at the bottom of this list for me. I'd rather start Hartline than I would Doriel Green Beckham. 100%. So, all right, running backs. Uh, This guy is owned... In most leagues, but it's still in the 80 percentile. So we just want to reemphasize, and it's a very important point. I'm going to let Mike. David il- Johnson. Thank you. <laughs> David Johnson is at the top of the list. If he's available by some strange anomaly, by magic. like all the, the planets aligned in some weird way to where he people were blinded from him, pick him up. 22 for 99 last week, 2 for 21 in the air and a touchdown. However, here's the real question. Do you sign Andre Ellington if you own David Johnson? Uh, if he's on waiver wire. Sure. I'm not. Because uh, what if he fumbles a couple more times? Yeah, if he if he fumbles again in Ellington, let's say Ellington is active, which he may or may not be with that turf toe. If David Johnson gets benched, to me, it's a it's a very committee uh, thing between Ellington and Kerwin Williams. Uh, I, they're, I, they're not going to give Ellington a full workload. Yeah, it's, it's a handcuff. I think the playoffs are a decent time to make sure you've got your handcuff of – you know, your studs. So, you know, an injury handcuff is how I see him, but not much Now, you're going to be there to watch him live, right? Absolutely. Will you try to sing that uh, audibly to where he could oh, possibly be? You, you better believe I will. <laughs> now, do we want to tell uh, – we should tell the people what we got in on Twitter. Because obviously, okay, first of all, we got a lot of David Johnson's uh, with, like, uh, musical notes And that was surrounding appropriate. Them, that was the right thing to do. However, we got a video. Oh, yes. It's a beautiful video. I, it should be spoken of. We retweeted it. It was the tweet, and I, I replied. I said, this is the tweet of the century. It was. Uh, it was a member of the Foot Clan. It was their daughter, age two, two to three or so, and she's singing David Johnson. It, it is the, <laughs> just – it is magic. It is magic. Wasn't it, she next to a Christmas tree? It, she yes. was next I mean, to it was Christmas just tree. perfect. It's Christmas And he magic. was like a present to yeah. owners on Waiver Wire, so I loved it. It was beautiful. All right. 
Ryan Matthews, we talked about him. He should be picked up, right? Absolutely. And he's available in half of your league, so go get him. I I wrote one note, and it said, impossible to trust DeMarco Murray, and that's just the truth. We talked about that at length, though. So let me mention some other names. Uh, Ownership percentages vary. Most of these guys are handcuffs that we think are somewhat important. Okay, before we get to that, then let me talk about James White, because he's really not a handcuff. Yeah, that's fair. James White had a, had a, a couple touchdowns on limited work two weeks ago. Did pretty much nothing a week ago. Then this past week, I guess I, I might have messed my week, weeks up there. <laughs> All right, this past week, though, he was back. Ten tar- uh, 13 targets, 10 catches. So the question is, is, I mean, would you roll James White out there? That's the question we need to know. Would you start him over, would you start him over Charles Sims, another uh, guy yes. on this list? Yes, I would start him over Charles Sims. I think he's in that Deion Lewis role enough to where he could have work through work through the air. What did he catch? Like ten of ten of thirteen. Ten of thirteen, yeah. you know, that's a good baseline. And a touchdown. Yeah, so I, I would I would rather have him over Sims, yes. I just I don't right. think the baseline is thirteen targets. No. So it's uh flex at most for me. Well they were in a situation of major comeback uh. role again too. There were a lot of like let's let's pick up five, six, seven, eight, nine yards, stop the blitz, throw it out to White. So And uh of note, Amendola, who who played and and had a pretty good game, he did. He was limited all week, so in practice may, they could have been going heavily to James White. So if if Amendola is practicing back in full, then those targets in the game plan might be to Amendola. Really, really good point. All right, another guy I want to mention that might be just outside of the handcuff realm now is very similar. Bilal Pal. Yes. Bilal Pal had 13 targets, just like James White did. He caught eight of them. And he makes his money in those PPR leagues the same way James White does. But he had a better week, statistically, than Chris Ivory did in most leagues. And the, and, and the same thing, the Jets were in a more of a comeback mode. So that put Powell on the field because of the of passing situations. But I agree that Powell has standalone value on top of being uh, the handcuff that you want to own for the Jets. Okay. And we'll obviously, we're going to put out our rankings uh, later tonight. I believe tomorrow. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it'll be late tonight or it'll be tomorrow. It'll be before the Thursday night game. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it, it depends. Sometimes <laughs> it takes some time. Uh, so pay attention to where we have Powell in relation to some of the other guys in the PPR rankings. That'll help you make some decisions there. Uh, Powell or White? Ooh, That's man. tough. So Powell this week Tennessee. takes on the Titans and White takes on the Texans. Because of that, I, I think I would go uh, White. Or are you gonna say Powell? I was gonna say Powell, but then I'm thinking, you I mean, know, the Titans' they, rush defense is great, so there's an argument that could be made that Powell would be more involved. I would start uh, out of these two guys this week. It, I would probably start James White over him because I think there's just a higher scoring offense there, and so more chance for a touchdown. That that would be my only reason. I'm not I'm not confident that White's gonna outproduce Powell by any means. All right, some quick handcuff discussion. Jawan Thompson, Charles Sims, Robert Turbin, Terrence West, Boom Heron, Jay Ajayi, Fitzgerald Toussaint. And maybe people need to be introduced yes. to him. Yeah, Fitzgerald Toussaint uh, is backing up D'Angelo Williams now for the Steelers. There was the assumption it would be Jordan Todman, but when D'Angelo was out, Fitzgerald was the guy who got the got a couple carries, which uh, we don't have a ton of ton to go on of news out there, but remember D'Angelo Williams is 32 years old uh you just you have to be prepared right yeah I mean mean, at this point you have to be prepared for sure just in case something happens in your playoff run yes and I don't know how excited I'd be about I'm curious I I, I completely agree but I'm curious though if let's say this game D'Angelo goes down would you then trust just starting Fitzgerald Troussant that's where I said I would not be excited about it but at least you'd have that option yeah. in an emergency situation. And the, the truth is, is, I mean, we've seen D'Angelo Williams, who clearly does not have the same skill set as Le'Veon Bell, succeed because the offense is overpowering. So I, it's really funny. I got a ridiculous text, uh, a, like a notification from my, one of my sports scores app. You okay. know, they, they break news. Here's the news that they broke. NFL power rankings. Steelers could beat any playoff team if they got in. <laughs> cool story bro yeah well, breaking wow. news 
Wow, they could win if they were in the playoffs. Wow. I, I will say this in their defense. I texted you guys uh, after that Steelers game and said, I do not want to play the Steelers in the Super Bowl as a Cardinals as a Cardinal fan. fan. If we get there, please don't let I – would, I would rather face the Patriots than the Steelers. If the Cardinals lose to the Steelers for a second oh, time in the Super we're, Bowl, we're not even this go show there. will be over. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, would Mike and I – I mean, <laughs> <sighs> big, ben, gonna, big Ben owes us one. We're not going there. <clears throat> yep. Next. Hey, sorry, I'm good, lingering on thinking I've got about a good the last segue Super Bowl. Back to the waiver wire. So normally waiver wire is really made in in like the the running backs or or getting that great wide receiver in the playoffs. I find that the tight ends, quarterbacks, and defenses, because you generally have one of those positions started on each team, they become more important because you're playing both your teams needs and your opponent's team's needs you can't do that in week five but here you can and so if you've got a a, a guy across the way that's got a terrible tight end problem or a or an awful matchup for their quarterback or something like that then you can play keep away which i know you're doing right right andy i am going to do that with mike yeah he knows it i'm going to take one of his he, his quarterbacks away yes uh and so to speak to jason's point uh quarterbacks is kind of harder to, to play keep away because there's so there's generally at least a a few solid streaming options uh tight end i think it's easier to uh keep away because this week uh it's be really between safarian jenkins for people who are paying attention austin safarian jenkins played very limited snaps and saw a decent amount of the targets including an end zone target which he unfortunately dropped richard rogers is coming off that huge game, uh, so he will be. He will a, draw all the attention. He will be a hot pickup, whether or not that's the right move, because he's really not produced at a high level. I mean, he'll, he's he's great if you need two catches for thirty or forty yards. I think forty something was his career high, or was his year 45, high. Yeah. That's that. that's what he does, and then occasionally scores. So he's not a he's not a terrible play. But between those two guys, those I mean, those will be the 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 bigger pickups. So let's say you're. You're up, matched up against a Gronkowski owner who didn't make a move to get one of these guys, or they you see that maybe they have Crockett Gilmore who went down. Uh, you pick up Safarian Jenkins, put him on your bench, and just and hide him away. You put him in the in the dark, in the shadows where the other team cannot play him. What are you guys' thoughts on Will Ty at the tight end position? For Giants, because he was in consideration for me to sign last week. With Larry Donnell's probably not even going to come back right. this season. Will Ty was three for 70 again last week. He had 74 yards the week before. He's kind of interesting, isn't he? Yeah, it, he's a name that the the that most people haven't even thought of or considered because they just haven't. He, he hasn't been around long enough. Kind of below the that, radar. The yeah. name recognition. But I do think Will Ty is he's a... He's a decent flyer for a tight end if you're the, really struggling. The main problem I have <clears throat> with him at the tight end is what I look for in a tight end is I look for a guy that has a baseline of receptions and that's used in the red zone because really a tight end, whether or not they had a good game is generally comes down right. to whether they got a touchdown. I, I don't think he's used that much in that role. Maybe he fills into the, the Donnell role, but he hasn't had a touchdown on the year yet. So, you know, that's just, maybe that just means it's coming. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, maybe I, he's I, due. Yeah. Well, and, and, <laughs> You know, we just spoke. Larry Donnell was the starting tight end. So, I mean, he has limited, you know, five for 56, six for 74, three for 70 the last three weeks. That seems like a baseline as the tight end. Yeah. I agree with you. He hasn't scored, but maybe, you know, maybe it's time. We'll see. Maybe it's tie. Ooh. Yeah. What? Zach Ertz finally got in the end zone. Hooray. Good transition. He's been in the end zone and open many times this year. <laughs> so. Okay, I should stipulate he caught a pass. Yeah, one of the one of the balls reached him in the end zone this <laughs> week, go. so that was great. Uh, but yeah, okay, so if you're choosing between Austin Sferry and Jenkins and Richard Rodgers this week, I know my pick. Jenkins. Jenkins, Jenkins all the way. I, Targets. I, and and, I and don't the like, matchup. Yeah, exactly. I was oh, going to yes. say that not only is it great for Austin Sferry and Jenkins, but it's also bad for Richard Rodgers. The Cowboys are not – I mean, you, you sat – Rule 86, uh, you sat Jordan Reed against the Cowboys uh, for just cause. So, yeah, I would take Austin Safarian Jenkins. All right, so quarterback time. Quarterbacks to pick up in the playoffs and stream to grab them before someone grabs them from you. Who are guys that you 
personally like a lot for the playoff run. Jason, I mean, we're going to get into this. I mean, in a moment, yeah. too, in our streaming section. So it's, so, it's kind of redundant. Well, it's but. not that redundant because in the waivers, this isn't necessarily – this is the week right now where it's like, okay, I made the playoffs. I'm in. I have to focus on the playoffs. And so it's not – it's not always just this week in the sense that if you're a streamer and you know you you can look at your matchups and you can carry multiple quarterbacks, so you might have your guy for this week, but he might have a terrible matchup in you know in in week 15. Or let's say you're the Big Ben owner, are you going to play Big Ben against the uh, against the Broncos, Broncos in week 15? And you've got an extra roster spot, yeah. so you're you're looking at a guy in week 15 you can grab Matthew Stafford. Uh, he's probably owned, but he's a great option. There. He's at 79%, so mostly owned. Mostly owned. Uh, Blake Bortles has probably the best, in my opinion, set of matchups throughout the, the, the playoffs. He's got the week 16 against New Orleans. And I an really in, like that. An interesting fact about Blake Bortles and, and Matthew Stafford. Uh, Blake Bortles, in our scoring format, currently sits as the number six quarterback. Matthew Stafford is owned in a higher percentage of leagues in ESPN than Blake Bortles. People, Blake Bortles, he, what does he have to do? do what does get, he have do to do? Do you think if his name was Johnny Touchdown instead of Blake Bortles that he would be owned in more leagues? That's, it's very possible. We have this, this, wasn't this the discussion that led to Bort? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just remembered that too. We've, we've <laughs> talked about this. Hey, let me tell you something. In case you're curious, I'm not sitting Big Ben against Denver. So you're te- wait. Can I can I ask you a question? Would you rather start Big Ben against Denver or Matthew Stafford against New Orleans? Big Ben against Denver. That's ridiculous. Let me read you a number: two hundred eighty yards, three touchdowns, Thir- thirty-three and a half fantasy points against Denver. Is that Derek Carr? No. It's Tom Brady. Brady. It's Tom Brady. Uh, I'm not sitting Big Ben in my playoff matchup. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm with I'm with Andy for that. But there are. It's a tempting. I mean, there if are, you had to choose things from the stars that you wanted to tempt me with, Stafford against the New Orleans defense is a good one. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just throwing it out there in case there's somebody else who wants to be, you know, strong with Big Ben. I want you to know you've got an advocate in me because I'm not <laughs> going to sit down Big Ben in the playoffs. He ha- he has the weapons to beat him. And, exactly. And when it, when I started looking at the playoff matchups and saw that juicy matchup, the one thing I thought as a football fan was. Oh, I want to watch that game. I want to watch. I want to see the. I mean, just I want to see Big Ben and those weapons against that defense. Oh, and I see thought what you were happens. gonna say you wanted to see Fitzgerald Toussaint. <laughs> so uh, okay, well let's let's stay on Denver for just a second. You're Week 14. You're a Derek Carr owner. Are you gonna play Derek Carr against Denver? Who last no. time he had 250 and a touchdown? No, of course not. Okay, Week nope. 16. Let's look even further ahead. Andy Dalton. Are you gonna play Andy Dalton in Denver? No, against the Broncos. Nope. Okay. I'm putting Brady I'm and Big Ben in a separate category due to the I offense agree. and their players. So I it's agree. those are great questions. So and so if you're those owners, you need to plan ahead. So let's talk guys. So we had Bortles and Stafford who they're probably owned. Guys that are probably not owned in your league. Brian Hoyer. I love, love Brian Hoyer as a waiver pickup for the playoffs. Love him. His schedule this uh, this week, a little bit tougher against New England. However, after that, the Colts and the Titans. Great matchups for Hoyer, who, who Hoyer has really been getting it done all year. Three touchdowns again last week. He, he just, he's just he got DeAndre Hopkins, uh, his running game. Nine receivers. He threw to nine different receivers last wow. week. Wow. Yeah. That's very impressive by Brian Hoyer. Yes. And a great stat nugget. I I did not realize yeah. that, but Hoyer is he, he's a great uh he's a great streaming option. In in a six in a six touchdown league, do you know do you want to know how many games he's had when he's played obviously the whole game, not just gone out with concussion. How many games in a row he's been at over twenty fantasy points? All of them? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All basically all of them since he came back from that injury early. So he's he's got a safe baseline and he's had Several games. He's had a couple of games, two over thirty. So, definitely a good option in the right matchup. And his schedule is great. And then you got the rookie, the rookie sensation, who's uh, he's rising up the crowds of Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston, who this week plays the New Orleans Saints, then he gets the Rams, and then he gets the Bears. All three are plus matchups. Yeah, it's weird because of how 
the Rams started the year to look at that St. Louis schedule and say, that's a plus matchup. But weirdly enough, it is a plus matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. And how about this guy? Tyrod Taylor. This week, he gets the Eagles. Then he gets Washington and then Dallas. Yeah, I, I would have no problem. He's been on fire, too. Two straight great weeks, and then this matchup, he should have another great week. So uh, there are there are guys available on your wire who you can pick up. Uh, I'll, I will also include Jay Cutler, who was granted very disappointing last week and has been in a, a bit of a slump uh, fantasy-wise, but those were against some, t- some uh, tougher matchups like Denver. But it, coming up, weeks 14 through 16, Washington, Minnesota, who we need to evaluate them because they were just destroyed we where were they be i'm not sure but washington minnesota and tampa bay three three pretty good matchups for a fantasy quarterback all right before we get into the full stream ahead section and give you our favorite streaming quarterback for this week let's talk about defenses yes so this week defenses that you need to have who's at the top of that list i know the lions for me are at the top in a couple of my playoff leagues the lions are the top uh, streaming defense for me this week. I'm with you because they take on the Rams. Uh, and you, you could tell me, Hey Mike, uh, what if, what if, uh, case Keenum is the quarterback for the Rams? I will say good. Start the good. Lions. I will start the lions. I will start the lions uh, happily against either Keenum or Nick Foles. Okay. Who else do we like Jay? Uh, you know, another team that has a great matchup this week, you've got the bears, against Washington. Washington, uh, we saw how wonderful their offense was last night. <laughs> <clears throat> and the truth is the Bears are a good defense. They started the year terrible for a couple of weeks and kind of got a bad rap. But over the last you know section of the, the year, the last probably half of the football season, they've been a really good defense against the pass, against the run. They've done enough to win. And, and they turned around from what looked like a team playing for the first pick to a team trying to make the playoffs. So in the, the Washington, the secret was revealed last night. You just line up two linebackers in the a gaps. And the Washington offense is just bewildered. Shut down. There's bewildered. No, there's nothing they can do. Yeah. yeah. Which is ridiculous. There's let's just run this. It's like playing Madden. When you find that one play that works, blitz your linebackers up, up the a gap against Washington. You get success. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else you want to talk about defensively? Uh, the Giants take on the Dolphins. Tannehill's been a uh, turnover machine. The Jets uh, take on Tennessee. And then in the off chance that the Chiefs are available, they play San Diego. And Phillip Rivers is amongst the leaders of uh, throwing a pick six. Oh, we can only hope for that this week. Can't uh, we? Can we, Mike? You're a smelly face. I may or may not have the Chiefs defense. <laughs> 